hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at a create add-on um, called Create the Factory Must Grow. Now it's an add-on that aims to do something different than most uh, um, by expanding Create Beyond its kind of steampunk um, into say a diesel punk, um, adding oil uh, collection and processing as well as different materials and blocks to kind of expand uh, your industrial complexes and as well as making your factory grow so let's dive right in for world generation we have lingmite bauxite fire clay sulfur and fossil stone lingmite is found in Deposits like this with different layers similar to the other crate ores. Now lignite can be processed using the crushing wheels as we see here. If we put the lignite in, we get gold out. So crushing it allows us to get gold. Now these deposits can be quite large, so it's a great um, way to uh, get coal, acquire coal through this uh, mod. As you can see here, box that is. Um, found similar with these large deposits. It is also processed using the crushing wheels, um, which you get this crushed um, raw aluminum, as well as experience points. Now we're gonna be using this aluminum for many different things inside the up, up mod. And as you can see, it can be washed or smelted similar to the other crushed ores um, inside of the create mod. Fire clay is found in deposits with um, gravel and sand, as you can see here. Sulfur can be found in deposits like this in the nether. Now, sulfur is processed it's very similar to the others, through their crushing wheels, and when it is sent through, we acquire sulfur dust, which we will be using later on in a few recipes. Now, fossil stone actually spawns in kind of geode type clusters and as you can see here it's just a few layers thick and uh, has uh, crude oil inside so this is a early way to find oil without needing to build pump jacks and whatnot that we're going to be covering here in a little bit now in survival you can see here that breaking this fossil stone actually takes quite a long time similar to say obsidian right so i'm just going to kind of break this here i'm using a unenchanted netherite pickaxe um, and we notice that it is again picking quite a well now once we get this we can actually we don't crush anything we use it as a fuel source and it will smelt uh, 20 items additionally if we take bauxite and put it in a stone cutter we're able to get different variants of it out um, similar to different stone types so as you can see here we can get cut bauxite um, polished bauxite cut bauxite bricks, small bauxite bricks, and they come in the stair, slab, and wall variants, as well as bauxite pillars, which have a vertical texture connecting, and layered bauxite, which has a horizontal texture connection. Okay, so as far as new resources, uh, obviously we got the fire clay ball from um, harvesting the fire clay, as we saw, um, and if you um, smelt that either using create smelting or in a furnace you get fireproof bricks which we'll be using to make some um, different machines uh, here later on uh, additionally we get aluminum um, which we get from either smelting or washing down the crushed aluminum that we get from the box like we saw next we have uh, cast iron which is made by taking um, by taking iron and coal and mixing it in here with it needs to be heated so since that's done there we go all right we get cast iron again all right next we have steel um which we're gonna go over here in a further part of the video because there's a whole part of that you have to um casting and a, and a few other things uh, in this last update it became a little bit more immersive um, then additionally, uh, plastic, which we're going to be looking at after we get into distilling. Additionally, um, you can use these resources to craft um, a variant of the um, different pipes, um, pumps, smart fluid pipes, and the fluid valves. Um, so here we have steel, 
cast iron, aluminum, plastic, which is similar to the aluminum, but a little bit more white. And then also it allows for a brass variant of it. So these function exactly the same as the copper ones, but they um, just change the aesthetic of it. And those are crafted, all very similar recipes. As you can see, an iron plate and a pipe, um, an aluminum ingot, pipe and electrode, cogwheel, and it's the same uh, as we go down the line. Though the steel only takes two. Whereas the rest of them take three, as you can see. Additionally, there's a steel fluid tank uh, variety of the uh, fluid tanks. Again, it acts exactly the same as um, the copper one, but it is actually um, required for a few of the uh, machines. And it is crafted with just a barrel and steel ingots on either side, just like you would with the iron, um, or tie the copper to make the uh, other fluid tank. Also some additional things you can create with these. If you put the steel ingot inside of a stone cutter or use a stone cutting contraption uh, you can create, you can get these industrial pipes, steel bars, steel ladders, steel scaffolding, steel trusses, uh, rebar and uh, screws. This is from a different mod. Um, and as you can see, this is the only way to acquire these. So, say this one here um, is a, needed for the oil extraction. We'll go over that here in a little bit. Um, guess there is nothing. Aluminum, uh, similarly, you have aluminum bars, aluminum ladder scaffolding, aluminum truss, uh, and you can actually create some, some decorative blocks out of this as well, caution block, factory floor, and a new version, uh, the new version has this red caution block. And these the scaffolding work just like vanilla scaffolding, so. But carry that more industrial aesthetic though I, I guess the one difference is, is they won't fall if they're unsupported right whereas the um, vanilla ones will here's the trusses um, again there's a, a decorative block um, I think they look really nice in different builds and then the ladders work work similar now additionally we saw with the steel in here and we have the ladder bars and all that. Um, but we also have these the rebar <coughs> and the screw, which these are going to be crafting components that we're going to utilize uh, for different machines. Um, the rebar you can put in concrete uh, and whatnot. So we'll take a look at that here in a little bit as well. Next, we have the spark plug, which needs to be crafted in a mechanical crafter. It can't be crafted in traditional, but it's just a well, that went really fast. Let's see, aluminum ingot and a flint, and that gives you a spark plug. Next, we're gonna take a look at uh, a couple different um, components here. So, if we take limestone and we process it through a crushing wheel, we get this lime sand, which, just like sand, is affected by gravity, right? Now, we can take this lime sand, we can actually process it into a couple different things here. So, if we take it and we mix it with clay balls, we get cement, which we're going to use as a crafting component here uh, for um, concrete. And we also get it to make blasting mixture, which we combine with uh, crushed raw iron, and it's um, inside of a mixer. And it gives us this blasting mixture, which we're going to need to use in order to make um, steel. Right, so we're going to make a uh, blasting furnace here in a little bit, and that'll give us uh, steel.
we take that cement and if we combine it in a basin and mix it with uh, one cement, one gravel, one sand, and half a bucket of water, it will create liquid concrete. Now, um, if we take a look here in JEI, we can also see that we can use slag instead of sand, which we will get to slag in a little bit in case you wanted to use that instead. That's also a recipe there. All right, so if we come here, let's see, we fill that up. We take this and we fill this bucket with concrete. We get a splash advancement. And then we can just place this in the world. You notice it's not quite, if I grab just a block here, see it's not quite a block high. Um, uh, but once it hardens, it will, uh, it'll fill the whole spot. So basically, you come and you, you fill up the space you want. And over time, oh, that one hardened a lot faster. I wonder if there's different rules or if a fan might. Uh, we have to look that up. Uh, it might be worth experimenting, but if you notice, we're slowly sinking in it. It's kind of like quicksand, it slows us way down. Um, but yeah, so that's how you make concrete now. Now, there's something else we can do with this. That's pretty cool. Let's check that out. <laughs> As you can see here, more of these have dried. Well, let's try to set this up. But if we take the stone cutter here, we put some planks in there, we can make these framework blocks. So let's, let's just make two. And then if we take, um, the steel, uh, ingot, which I know we haven't got over steel quite yet, we'll get there. You can put it in a stone cutter as well, and you get this rebar, which you can then turn this framework block into a rebar framework block, so that way when you pour your concrete in, it'll be reinforced. Um, and we'll show you about that. So the framework blocks are pretty cool. I'm going to come over here where we can kind of repurpose this here. So if we come in here, and we can take these frameworks, we can make them into kind of any shape we want, right? So let's say we, we go like this. Um, no, it, can be, it can be honestly a funky shape. Um, and then if we come in here and we replace this here, you'll notice that it starts to fill up these framework blocks. And it'll start from the bottom and fill it up. And you can see it stopped filling up here. And it's con any, any connected framework box, any shape, as long as they're connected, it will fill them all the way up. Except for this last one, apparently. I don't know if there's a limit to it, actually. Interesting. It's weird. When I did it before, it worked just fine. But I guess I didn't do this exact shape. I don't know if it's something like that. Now, once these dries, they'll turn into concrete blocks, and uh, they'll be in the shape. Which just can, you know, come, come really cool. You know, I, the thought I had was I'm going to build a, a contraption that looks like a cement truck that, <laughs> that carries the cement, right? Or sorry, concrete. Uh, I work in construction, I should know that. Um, <coughs> uh, the difference between cement and concrete. Anyway, um, so once this dries, I believe the, uh, the framework just falls off, if I remember correctly, for my test ones. But let's take a look at this rebar. So. We'll do, we'll do the rebar over here. So see, it kind of has the rebar in there. Now let's do maybe something a little bit more practical than what we did before. Like a, just like a footing. And uh, we'll take and we'll just bring this over here. Come on. Add this 
here. Hmm. Okay, we can see once those dried, the framework box uh, kind of fell away, and we're just left with the uh, the design that we had. You see, it's solid all the way through. Uh, easy way to build, uh, something big, but again, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay. That was very weird. I'm not sure what was going on there. But, uh, for some reason it took this configuration. It might have been glitched. I'm, I'm not sure. But we're working now. Uh, there we go. So once this dries, I'll just uh, fast forward here and I'll show you what it turns into. And there we go. See how that all... Now this is rebar concrete. If we come down here and we place them next to each other. You see that the rebar concrete is darker. Um, but there's a few other differences. So if we come in here to grab some dyes. So, something we can do with the regular concrete is we can color it with, a, oh, obviously not, uh, once it's colored, it's colored, I guess, but if you notice here, we can't actually do that with the rebar. So, the rebar concrete can't be colored like the regular concrete can. And as you can see in here, all the different concrete colors can be made into um, walls, stairs, slabs, right, um, which can be done with stone cutting right um and additionally the the rebar concrete can be as well so if i go into survival here we'll see the difference here is if you look at my um jade up there you'll see that this can be done with a stone pickaxe but the rebar requires a diamond or greater right so it breaks pretty quick this one takes a lot longer to break Right. Now, additionally, um, I don't think they're actually blast resistant. Let's test that out. Oh, there we go, they fixed that. So previously the rebar wasn't any different, but as you can see here, the regular um, concrete um, was not blast resistant, but the rebar concrete was. And there's some cool mechanics there, definitely some... some building possibilities and things like that that um, might be fun to explore. Now, is this uh, easier than just doing the vanilla concrete? I don't know. Who knows? Doing the powder and then washing it. But um, it's definitely unique. It's definitely a, a fun feature to play around with. So I'm excited to do this uh, in survival. Next, we're going to look at the coal coke oven, which uh, <laughs> if you're familiar with, uh, say, immersive engineering, or um, railcraft way back way back in the day we had coke ovens so um, similar here so you need a coke oven and if you look at here we're gonna look at the recipe real quick it is a block of industrial iron and a cast iron ingot which again we looked at those and just a reminder this is a create one it's just a iron ingot through block cutting or stone cutting and it can give you the industrial iron block now uh, if we take a look at the ponder here, we can see that it is uh, a three by three uh, multi-block structure, and it's a pretty slow process, which we've seen in all the other ones. But you can obviously um, pump a lot of things. But so it takes um, your coal in, produces creosote, and produces your coal coke. You just have to um, exhaust out. Uh, the CO2, right? So if we come in here, we do a sorry, three by three. You notice that nothing happens. This is I was like, oh, what's going on? You have to actually, what was it? No. There we go. I didn't set those quite right. You gotta make sure that the textures all kind of line up right, otherwise 
and those lids off. So here we go. We've got a Coke oven. It is empty. Um, if we come in here, and we grab some coal, and let's grab a shoot. You can obviously pipe this in, however. Um, but if we just dump that on there. See that it's got... Working pretty slow. So I just throw this in here. Just gonna pull that out. And see it spits it out the front there. I don't know if I love. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if you put a filter or a funnel on this, if it'll do that, but we can do that. So you see that nothing's working, it's because I missed a step. And that is putting this exhaust on here. And I think if I do this, ooh, no way there. To go faster. Oh, nice. oh, see now, it do that. <laughs> Figure out a better way to do that. Oh, I guess it just doesn't seem like it's working because this is pulling out too fast. That's what it was. Uh, I don't know how necessary the exhaust is. I'll be curious to find out. But again, you can you can stack these up close to each other and, and make quite the uh, thing. Now this exhaust real quick, it's with the cast iron pipes, cast iron ingots, and andesite bars, which um, is just to create a uh, thing as well. And then again, the cast iron are just in a line, either vertically or horizontally. We're going to show those. Cool, so this should be all spit on the ground down here. <laughs> Now, why would you want cold coke, you might ask? Well, we actually need it for quite a few things. So if we look at it here, um, obviously we can make a block of cold coke. Um, actually, I spilled 60 times, so we are doubling the output of our um, fuel if we wanted to, to use um, cold coke as fuel. Very effective, right? Um, but we can actually crush it into this cold coke dust, which is an ingredient in order to make steel, right? Which is what we care. I guess the, the question now is what do we do with that creosote oil? So uh, I've uh, explained this a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, we're taking our creosote oil, we're pumping it over here. And what we do is we use the spout to apply it to these planks. And it can be any wood planks as far as uh, I understand. And it gives us these hardened planks. Now, what can we do with these? Take a look here. That's the recipe. Um, essentially, all they're good for is either decoration or for creating these steel casings. It's done by applying uh, steel to the hardened planks. Now, this can be done manually or automatically, just like any other casings. Now, these steel casings, um, if we check here, um, they can be used to create these doors. And it's just any door. Um, and then they also need them to create these heavy machine casings, which we are actually going to use um, quite a bit. So here's what the steel doors look like. And let's go take a look over here. So. First off, we're going to take our steel and we're going to put it through this mechanical press and we're going to stamp it three times. That's going to give us um, a heavy plate. Now, if we apply that heavy plate to um, our steel casing, we get these heavy machine casings, which 
are used for quite a bit of crafting uh, recipes. Um, and we're gonna need these in order to, to you know, find oil, mine it, and refine it, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but then here's also the what the uh, heavy casings doors look like, right? Kind of sliding doors. All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look next at how we actually make steel since we've used it in several different applications so far. So next, in order to make steel, first we need to actually use this coal coke that we have. So I've got it set up here, and we're just throwing it through these grinding wheels. And that gives us coal coke dust, which we're going to need in order to make steel, along with the blasting mixture that we, we looked at previously. Um, again, that's just iron and crushed raw iron and lime sap, right? So let's come over here where it's a little quieter. Um, so first we're going to need to take those fire bricks that we made from the fire clay. Um, and we're going to make some fireproof bricks as well as a, a blast furnace output which uses those cast iron ingots and a cast iron pipe so a fireproof brick. Now this is going to be another multi um, block machine. So if we put the blast furnace here, we then need to make a cross of blast bricks. And then from there, we need to build up a chimney. Now, if I remember correctly, we can ponder this here. I think it's five high. Um, four high. I think, the, I think it's fine. I think you can add more. If you want but then you need to come in here we need to add some walls to do this here so now that should work here now we should be able to just put in this cold coke dust and the blasting mixture need to add some sort of uh, fuel in there so added some coal and that got started so there you see we're making molten slag and molten steel so if we go ahead and pull that out come in here we take a steel well, any fluid tank really let's put that there and we're gonna want smart fluid going in there and then we're going to come in here and we're going to come and grab um, our molten slag and our molten steel bucket now as we see here we're getting our molten slag and uh oh where's our molten steel oh it's still in here oh there it comes so i think it's uh only pulling one fluid at a time once it empties it it switches back to the other one Anyway, so let's take a look at what we can do with this molten steel. A few different um, components we're going to need to do. Um, so let's take a look at those now. First, we're going to need this casting spout, which you can see here is made by uh, five cast iron ingots and a cast iron pipe with a piece of glass. And we're also going to need this casting basin, which is kind of the same um, cauldron shape of cast iron. Now to use these, we're going to take our casting spout and place it over casting um, basin. And we're going to additionally need these molds, which there's a block mold, and they're made by taking a clay block, putting it in a stone cutter, and there is, you see, an ingot and a block version. Now we just place the molds here in the casting basin, and you can see uh, it starts to pour into the mold. And once this is done here, it takes a little bit of time, It'll f so once it fills up, it'll harden and it will be able to extract that um, steel. Now, this molten slag we can use later on um, in a different recipe. Um, but let's just wait for this to fill up. Okay, now that it's full, it should take and harden from molten steel into a block of steel. Um, and I think it took very long. I mean, it's not a super quick process, but it shouldn't be. Oh, there we go. So you see now, uh, we should be able to take the mold and the 
Oops. I get... well, that's out of my hand. I should be able to grab. Maybe if I come in here and put a filter on the side or a uh, tunnel funnel on the side here. Oh, there we go. Now it spits out. And the nice thing is it doesn't take out the mold, but it just takes out the end product. And we can see here if we switch out the mold for the ink mold. Oh, this. Let me fix that real quick. Whack that there. It should start filling back up. All right, there we go. See, it feels a lot quicker. Obviously, it's just one ingot versus a block, so that makes perfect sense. I'm assuming it's a ninth as quick. <laughs> and soon we should the ingot pop it up. Oh, there it goes. And now we have a steel ingot. So as you can see here, pretty simple setup. And like I said, we take this molten slag, and if we actually look here, we can see that we can use it in, well, we produce it by blasting, but if we use it, we just need to mix it without heating, and we are able to get this uh, solid slag, which we can use in concrete or a few other ways, as you can see here. Next, we're going to be taking a look at these steel mechanism, which is a crafting component we're going to use um, for quite a few of the machines that we're going to make. So, but what it takes is it takes these heavy plates, which we looked at earlier, um, and a sequenced um, crafting, whatever it is called. <laughs> Sorry, those were. Um, so, we first step is we put steel, then aluminum. Then some screws, which if you remember, are just uh, stone cutting um, some steel ingots. Um, <clears throat> and then you use a screwdriver, which um, is just a rebar over some aluminum. Um, and this just takes durability, so you might have to have some feed into here, but um, it doesn't actually use the item. Right? And there you go. You get steel mechanism and then a small chance of, of job similar to the precision mechanism. So we looked at the fossil stone um, geode type things that spawn oil. But there's also a better way, more advanced way to get oil and a lot more oil. And for that we're going to need this uh, surface scanner. And to craft that you need to craft it in mechanical crafters, you can't craft it normally. And it's with two heavy plates, a compass, one of those heavy machinery casings that we talked about, a shaft, two of the steel mechanisms that we hate, that we did over there, uh, and then two copper plates. So once we push this in here, it should all start going together. Oh, I should have sped that up. Sorry, guys. Let's check out how this works. If we ponder it, we'll see that it's used to locate. We add rotational force. And now this has actually changed since their last update, so um, I'm excited to, to kind of check it out. So let's come down here, grab a creative thing. Hey, how loud those are. So it should be scanning right now. Let's just stop this. Oh, <laughs> we need our glasses on. There we go. All right, so with our glasses on, we can see that there is a deposit located in that direction, 115 bucks. So, let's, uh, let's actually, let's put a waypoint here. And 
There's 115 bucks. <laughs> now we're obviously way more than 115. Um, though I assume it's all lateral. So if we put something here, it should tell us. So we this here. Scanning the surface. Should point to just right over there and say just a few blocks away. There we go. 16 blocks away. somewhere around here all right well I took some poking around but I found it right here oh and we're just gonna go right down and here we go so this is an oil deposit now these are important because uh, again this is how we're gonna use our pump jack to pump out fluid oil um, or sorry crude oil um, but as you can see it's all the way down at bedrock um, we are at level negative 63, so it's the very bottom layer. In fact, if we come over here, you notice that if we come underneath, there's a whole patch right here. And I think that's so that you actually can get one that makes it down here. Because if you notice, these all have kind of bedrock on top of them. And uh, you'd be... So, if you find a deposit and you dig down you're not able to find it, it may be because you don't have enough layer of bedrock down. So, I think it's a big patch like that just in case. So, we found this one here. So, let's go up and let's talk about what we need to do in order to create the pump deck. Alright, so let's take a look at the what we need to make the pump deck. So, we're going to need to craft all of these using um, mechanical crafters unit, except for I think this first one, um, <coughs> um, which is our mechanical input. Um, and I think this is actually used for a few different uh, machines, but it's just a steel mechanism, uh, heavy machinery casing, and shaft, uh, top of each other in that order. Uh, next is our pump jack crank, which is two rebar two heavy plates, a string, and a heavy machinery casing. And uh, next is our pump jack base, which is four heavy plates in the corners, two mechanical, or sorry, <laughs> steel mechanisms across the bottom here, an industrial pipe, which if we remember correctly, is just a steel ingot in the stone cutter, gives you eight of them. And then obviously the heavy machine casing in the middle. And then the last one is this pump jack hammer holder, which is four steel ingots across the top here, two blocks of steel down, steel truss, and some screws. Which again, uh, the truss and the screws um, are both from steel ingots as well as the industrial pipe. Okay, so back here at our um, hole. We actually need a bunch you're gonna need a bunch of this industrial pipe because essentially you're gonna need to pump it up from down there so if we ponder this um, you'll see that it's showing here you need to extend your industrial pipe from that bedrock source all the way up to underneath where the uh, pump jack piece is now this this is outdated I don't think that's what it actually looks like but let's let's take a look here so so I'm gonna go fill this in. We'll start here. Okay, there we go. Um, and we're gonna take our pump jack base here, and I'm pretty sure that this that little arrow needs to be pointed in the right direction and I believe it's the other way but let's uh, ponder this again and yeah we see that those kind of red symbols are on top there pointing forward all right then we had the hammer Ooh. all right so let's take some steel truss and we'll put it there and this is 
Let's shut it up. Should it go out the side? I think it can go any direction. Um, and then this goes here. Again, I don't know if this is directional. Yes, I think the dots need to go to the forward part. So you see it's got those two, oh my gosh, two little pixels there on the front. And then let's put the hammer on there. Hey, right, that looks like the picture. Except for, I'm gonna put this last. Correct thing. So I guess those little dots need to point towards the back, because now you see we've got our uh, the different pieces added to it. So let's go ahead and grab a creative motor here. Now, if I remember correctly, I think this needs a certain um, speed on it for it to actually work. There you go, 32 seems to be the minimum, and there it's pulling it up. So from here, we extract the that from there. So I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna pull this out. And the faster you go here, obviously, the faster it's going to pump, I think, to a certain degree. Um, there it goes. And there you go. We are pulling oil from the um, bottom of the world. Um, now, I don't know how large these deposits are, but I know, I don't believe it pulls infinitely. But I do believe it pulls a very large amount. Now, if we could get to more of those oil deposits at the bottom there, which you saw it had a whole cluster, we could probably set up a couple of these kind of next to each other, but um, it's a lot of pipe. So let's take a look at what we do with this crude oil. So <clears throat> we take the crude oil and we bring it into a distillation tower, which if we take a look here, those need some more fuel. We have some, you know, fed blaze burners. Um, on the bottom level, you need this uh, steel distillation controller, which, if we look here, um, again is the mechanical crafting. It is two electron tubes, uh, heavy machinery casing, display board, show pipe. Uh, heavy plates and steel mechanism again mechanical crafting only um, and then you need uh, industrial pipe and uh, steel distill <laughs> steel distillation output right so recipe for this again mechanical crafting only is four heavy plates four steel pipes and steel fluid tank uh, in this pattern here um, and then you need one, two, three, four, five, six of these with the industrial pipe separating them. And then you pump out of these blocks the different outputs. So it gets uh, turned into heavy oil, diesel, kerosene, naphtha, gasoline, and LPG. And each of these have, have their different uses, right? So this heavy oil, if we take here, here's your distillation tower set up, which is nice. Um, it shows you how it does these different things here. So if we look at the heavy oil, we can obviously fill it in as buckets if we want, but we can then make this cast iron distillation tower um, and distill this heavy oil down farther. And we'll, we'll take a look at that in here in just a second, but. I like if it's uh, more diesel, 
lubrication oil and uh, lubrication oil. So you get 60 millibucks of that and 30 of diesel for every 90 of heavy oil. Right? But you also get sulfur and bitumen, which the bitumen we can use to make liquid asphalt, which is very similar to the uh, concrete, right? It's just mixing with between sand and gravel with water. All right, next we get diesel, which um, we can use to power our diesel engines. Um, but there's nothing else we can do process-wise uh, with that, right? Besides put it in buckets. Um, we get the kerosene, which we can use to power the um, another engine. It's the turbine engine. We'll go over the engines here in a little bit. We'll get NAFTA as well. Which, if you take NAFTA and put it into the smaller distillation tower, you get propylene and ethylene, which we'll use for different things um, as well. But no solid outputs. So the, the propylene, if you mix it, you get your plastic. And actually, I think ethylene, you can do the same thing. So you can get plastic out of the propylene or the ethylene, but the ethylene you can mix in with water and get cooling fluid, which uh, we'll take a look at here in a little bit as well. It can be used to increase the efficiency of your, your engines and machines. After NAFTA, we get gasoline, which um, can power a gasoline engine, or you can mix it with aluminum and get napalm, <laughs> which we can use create napalm bombs, um, which um, if you surround them by plastic or by aluminum, you get the napalm bomb, which uh, when it explodes, instead of making a crater, it shoots out fire. We'll take a look at that here. Actually, let's, let's take a look at that right now. Mostly because a little break might be nice. So you like this similar as you would TNT. Like I said, it does make a small explosion. You see, oh, well, most of it in the water. It just spreads fire and destruction. So I guess a small explosion there. So that's made with gasoline and aluminum. And then LPG. You can't actually put LPG into a bucket. That's something that <laughs> took me a while to figure out. Um, but it can be fed directly into um, um, into an LPG engine. So that's all the different outputs we get from the distillation tower um, distilling the oil. So let's take a look at that smaller cast iron distillation tower. So, the recipes for this are, again, mechanical crafting, cast iron ingots, cast iron pipe, an electron tube, and a steel mechanism. And then the output is just cast iron pipes and cast iron ingots around it. Now for this, we're going to have the controller. Actually, you need to have a blaze burner. And then you need the controller. You need one, two, three um, of those on top. Now, if we notice in here, we can either do the crude oil, which gives us the lubrication oil or the diesel, or again, the NAFTA, which is what we're going to do right here, which gives us the ethylene or the propylene. So let's come over here. Grab a little bit of this. There we go. Power this real quick. Let's 
see here we got our ethylene and our propylene being made. And there we go. Very ugly setup. <laughs> Not necessarily ideal, but here we've got our propylene, ethylene, and ethylene. I guess we could have done the ethylenes on the same side, but it doesn't matter. Um, there we go. Actually, I probably could have pulled them out the same. There we go. That is a little bit better. I mean, it's still ugly, but <laughs> now we're not duplicating it. Our problem is, is we're not pulling enough of this in quite yet. Oh. It's because our... Just realized... Our glasses fell off. So this will show you our heat isn't enough to make this go full bore, but if we take and in the power of our creativeness we turn these into we'll see that our heat is increased I don't know how we get any hotter, I guess we can make this a 3x3 three three if I wanted to make it hotter alright, now it's showing that our size is too small for our heat I don't know how to make it happy, but we can, as you can see, we can do a 3x3 three three on this. And there we go. We're still going fast here, but this is getting sucked out almost immediately. As you can see, we are getting. Anyway, so there's the, the kind of distillation processes that we uh, uh, we can do in this. The, all the drippies are a little distracting, but whatever. In order to make the engines, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need these engine bases, and we need these engine chambers. And these can only be crafted in mechanical crafters. Um, so the engine base is just four heavy plates on either side like that. Mechanical, sorry, heavy machinery casing on the bottom, and a shaft on top. And then the engine chamber is just a spark plug, we looked at briefly before aluminum ingot and a steel mechanism so it's going to be sequence crafting again and uh, so for the first one the gasoline engine um, is you're going to take and you're going to put your engine base in here and it needs to have lubrication oil in it first an engine chamber then a screw, then a screwdriver, and it needs to do this process eight times. Now, it's a lot, and it uses <laughs> quite a few of these resources, but um, the stress units we're going to be getting out of this is, is amazing compared to uh, some of the other processes. And on top of that, um, there's no waste here, so once you get done, there's not a chance um, that you... If you notice, you get, well, you get two engines out of it, which is good because you need a front and a back, which the back you just get by um, putting an engine case in the crafting and switching back and forth that way. Um, and then, uh, again, there's no chance of waste. So next we're doing the LPG engine, and it's essentially just the reverse of that. Um, so you're going to start with your engine, chamber, screw, screwdriver, and then you're going to put on your lubrication oil, and then do it eight times. So, again, okay, it's just moving the lubrication oil to the end of the process instead of the beginning, which will give you your LPG. And lastly, we have our, well not lastly, we have diesel engines too, but those are slightly different. So we've got the turbine engine, which is slightly different. Um, you put on a turbine, which if we look at the recipe here, this doesn't have to be mechanical crafting if you don't want it to be, um, but it's just a two aluminum ingots on top and bottom of a rebar. And then screws, screwdriver, lubricant, and then a steel mechanism. Now there's more resources required here, but this only has to go around six times instead of eight. And in the end, you'll get some turbine engines. So here are the engines set up 
Um, these are smaller engines. The point of them is to be a little bit more compact. Um, the diesel engine that we'll create in a little bit is more comparative to the steam engines where you have to have a large contraption and things like that. Um, well, you, you can make it larger, right? So here's the gasoline engine. You see we have a front and a back, which, like we talked about, um, basically they can be used once you um, create one of these with the sequences. You can just craft them back and forth between them, um, and it creates two, so you can just turn one to the back. So you do the front, which is where the um, shaft comes out, where you can, you know, power your stuff. Um, and then you need to pump in its fuel. So this is a gasoline engine, so we're pumping in the fuel. It needs to come into this front block here. And then we need to pump out exhaust in the back here. Now, normally we're going to put this little exhaust thing on here, and it will eject the CO2. Otherwise, it'll build up in your engine, and it won't work. All right, but I put a tank here so we can see that it actually produces a gas, which I think is pretty cool. So if we turn this on, oh, that's the other thing is you have to supply this with a redstone signal for it to actually work. All right, got my glasses on. So we can see here we're producing 14,000 stress units from this engine here. Um, it's consuming gasoline and producing CO2. As you can see, it's actually building up in there, which I think is pretty cool. You can't bucket this. You can't put it in a, a creative tank which is another issue we had over here with the LPG but luckily I was uh, producing down here from earlier in the video right there's our little pump jack and set up and on that one anyway so that's that one now LPG uh, same setup right the, all three of these are the exact same the LPG engine requires LPG which again you can't bucket you have to pump it out um, but you can see we're producing the same amount of stress units and it sent it out at uh, 225 RPM. And the turbine engine, which, you know, these ones are named the same as the fluid it takes, but turbine engine just takes um, kerosene, excuse me. All right, so if we turn this on, you see it's ejecting the carbon dioxide here. Puffing out. Um, same thing, 14. Doesn't the same, right? Yeah. And uh, same speed there. So there's the uh, the small engines. They're all humming at the same time to give us a lot. Um, anyway, so let's uh, let's take a look at the diesel engines now. All right. So to create the actual diesel engine. Um, we're going to need 14 of these mechanical crafters in this kind of setup here, 3 by 4 and then 2 on the top. And then you need steel, aluminum, aluminum, steel, aluminum, um, your steel mechanisms, a steel fluid tank, a heavy machinery casing, and then three of your heavy plates here across the bottom. And then that'll create um, your diesel engine. Now, here's the diesel engine block. Um, the basic diesel engine, oh, I don't like that. It's, I mean, it can be facing that direction too. That's fine. As you attach the the shaft to it, and there you go. There's your your spot here. Now, this diesel engine here requires a few things. So, um, well, it requires uh, specifically three things. It requires gas. It requires air, and it requires um, the exhaust to go out. So if we take a look here at the ponder, it'll show us that. So fuel, exhaust, air intake. Right? Um, and that's the, your very basic version of the engine, right? So if we if we come here, we go be around. We need two in, one out. Um, we're going to need these air intakes, which doesn't require mechanical crafting. You can do it in just a crafting grid, but it's the end sight bars, heavy machinery casing, shaft, and a propeller. Um, now, the fun thing about this is you can actually upsize this. So if you're streaming, uh, stringing several of these uh, engines together and wanted to make this a little, just a little bit bigger, this can actually become a multi-block. Multi 2x2 two two makes it bigger, 
and also can do a 3 by 3 version, which this is, is pretty sweet. Um, I don't know if that requires, but obviously it requires power to it. Um, so I've set this up wrong over here. This needs to be turned sideways, which is, it showed in there. Right, so we'll need power to here. Right, so you see it's filling up there. And I'm assuming once we get this kind of up and going, it should tell us um, if it's getting enough air or whatever to be capacity. So let's set this, let me uh, plug in some creative fluid tanks here and we'll get started. And there we go. So with uh, diesel coming in, see we are producing 20,000 so those are about 14 is about 16 or sorry about 6,000 more than those um, but only going at a little shy of half the speed right you see we're bringing in way more air than we need so one intake can probably feed several inches now while well, it might have to be of speed we got this cranked up um, in fact if I grab this here see that we're uh, we're using about 2,000 stress units um, anyway so that's all it technically needs is diesel air and an exhaust out which we're not even producing enough really to make this spit out fumes right so let's take a look at, you can actually expand this in, in a few different ways. So let's take a look at this here. So they have this actual diesel engine expansion block, which the recipe is here with industrial pipes and the side bars, three steel fluid tanks, heavy machinery casing, right? Now what this does, if we go ahead and ponder this here, go to the next section. If you add that expansion on the back there, it allows you more faces or whatever, but it also allows you to add coolant and lubricant, which we're producing through our you know, distillation and all that, right? So uh, being able to add that in here uh, should increase the efficiency or whatnot. So let's reconfigure this here so it's facing sideways, so it, um, it's a little bit easier to manage. <laughs> So, uh, coming here, we uh, have our diesel engine and our expansion. Um, we've got our air, our lubricant, and our cooling coming to the back end, and our exhaust and our diesel to the front end. I originally took this up to see if I can mix these around, and I put the exhaust at the back, and this all jammed up. It wasn't pulling the exhaust from the diesel engine, having it here. So. The exhaust and the diesel need to be in here. The other three can be attached to the back there. Now, again, you can stack these, right? So that's the, the power of this. So uh, adding that extra extra cooling fluid and lubrication, I expected it to kind of add a bunch more, but in reality, it only added about 4,000 stress units, which I'm not sure if I just don't have this set up correctly or if that's, you know, just the case is for it. Um, either way, um, you know, we're getting an extra, you know, fifth um, efficiency, which I guess isn't bad. You know, 20% um, isn't terrible at all. Um, so, and again, creating a large diesel engine block, you're going to get uh, a lot of S uh, SU. So, um, that's it for, for the kind of the engines it adds here. Um, we're going to take a look here next at some of the kind of miscellaneous items that it adds. Still, uh, I wish it would show the smoke coming out. Like this one did. Does this one just produce more carbon dioxide? Oh, that one does too. And obviously that one does. Interesting. There you go. 
Uh, I kind of want to set up a big one of these, but um, we'll skip that. One thing uh, we didn't quite look at, we'll revisit now, is uh, making plastic. So, if we take a look here, we have the cast iron distillers um, that we looked at previously. Um, and we've got NAFTA, and NAFTA is turned into propylene and ethylene, right? So both of these can be turned into plastic. Um, propylene, that's kind of its only feature. Um, ethylene can also be used to create coolant fluid, um, as we looked at previously, right? So if I come in here, let's just switch this around. Um, to turn either of these into plastic, it's the exact same um, process as you uh, run it through a mechanical mixer, which is then gonna turn it into liquid plastic. And then pressing it in a mechanical press, you get uh, plastic. Right, so pretty simple. Now I can put a filter on here. All right, we're going to come down here. We're going to wrap it up with just a few of the last remaining things we haven't talked about. So this is currently not working for me. I'm going to have to make some adjustments. I don't know if it's my pack or whatnot, but what this was going to show is that this actually gives us a separate recipe for... Um, gunpowder using uh, nitrate sulfur and charcoal dust so if we take a look here it's just a matter of mixing three nitrate dust two charcoal dust and the sulfur which the sulfur we get from um, again the nether which we'll be using for a couple other things but um, which you know we already talked about sulfur so nitrate dust you just crush um, let's look at the recipe here you crush um, dirt you get about a 20% chance of getting nitrate dust. And then additionally, um, if you crush charcoal, you get charcoal dust. Now, this is where I'm having my issue, is if I click on here, we show the uses, go to crushing. There is a, and it says it's by create, but I don't know if it's create or if it's a different mod. But essentially, it's this it's doing this recipe first. So anytime we're crushing charcoal, it's giving us a crap ton of black dye and gray dye, and it's not giving us the charcoal dust. So to fix this, you have to go in and do a crafting tweaker or something like that, which I will do for my pack. But um, and if you're looking to do that, you'll that's the probably the route you want to go. I know there's a few different ways. Um, I'm not sure how to do it with a data pack. I know how to add recipes. I don't know how to take them away, but. I'm sure there's a way to do it. If not, there's Craft Tweaker. There's a create version or create add-on for Craft Tweaker. Uh, I think CubeJS, which I heard isn't overly recommended, but is another option there. So that's what was kind of going on here, and then I, I stopped. Uh, additionally, I wanted to show that you can create um, different versions of the flywheel as well with this, with your cast iron. Oops, sorry, cast iron steel. And then again, aluminum. More aesthetics, right? Um, next, we're going to look at the this uh, thermite powder. And it's just taking aluminum and crimsite and smashing it in a basin here. And it'll give you this crimsite powder, which we need for uh, these grenades over here. Okay, that's, that's annoying. Um, additionally, we have this baby right here, which is the quad um, potato cannon, which is awesome. And it's you got to be crafted using the mechanical crafters in this thing. You've got two of your industrial pipes, four um, steel pipes, two steel mechanisms two heavy plates and then a rebar here on the bottom craft that is going to give you this baby right here which if we grab us some potatoes or carrots or whatever it, it shoots right you see it shoots four at once which is awesome makes a sweet sound foo, foo. all right next let's take a look at these grenades so we've got um thermite zinc and copper now the base one is this thermite which is just um, thermite powder surrounding a plastic sheet or aluminum ingot. Um, your zinc one is two zinc and two sulfur. 
And your copper one is just four copper surrounding your thermite, right? So let's come over here and let's take a look at what these do. Oh, away from the noise. You get a dampening mod or something. Um, anyway, so we throw it. See, it's basically a napalm but in a grenade, right? And a little bit smaller. And then zinc. It's very similar except for it does green fire. Right. <laughs> nice. And copper, same with blue, which. Which, there you go. And then, lastly, I guess, is the uh, flare stack here. I don't know why I didn't. forget to showcase it earlier, but, but I was going through making sure I covered everything. Essentially, what it does is it allows you to burn off any excess. Uh, of the fluid here, right? So just running into the flare stack, it'll create eight um, little fire animation, and it's pretty sweet. So if we look here, these are the six uh, fluids that it can actually burn off: diesel, gasoline, kerosene, naphtha, heavy oil, and lubrication. As far as I was able to to test, the other ones didn't burn, which I mean kind of makes sense. So, alrighty. With that, I think that's uh, everything. I might have missed something. I'm sure I did. Um, and so hopefully everything was clear. If there wasn't, feel free to comment, ask questions. Um, I will leave links to the mod in the description, as well as links to the... Um, if you go through their mod page, you can get to their Discord, and you can ask questions there. They're pretty uh, active on there. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if there's, again, questions, all that, but we'll see you next time.